Job chapter 1, verse 1. It says, Therefore there is a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. He had seven sons, three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household, so that this man was the greatest of all the people in the east. And his sons would go and feast in their houses, each one appointed at his appointed day, and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was... Uh, when the days of feasting had run their course, that Job would send and sanctify them, and he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And thus Job did regularly. Father God, we ask the blessings upon the reading of your word. Lord, that you would also open our hearts and minds to receive what you would have us to hear this morning. And we just ask this in your name. Amen. So catching God's attention. Well, how do we do that? How do we catch the attention of God? Well, as we see with Job, the first thing we see is that he put his desires and trust in God. And God was first. He filtered his life through that. You don't come, become a man that says that he is blameless and upright and fear God and shunned evil just by trying to be a good person. There's a lot of good people out there. And as I heard a pastor say not too long ago, there's a, there's a lot of good people that's going to go to hell. There's good people, and then there's godly people. There's people that sin, and then there's people that are saved. People that understand that they need a, a God to come in and forgive them of their sins. We, ha we have God that sent his son Jesus into this world that gave his life for us. And we understand that. And I hope that we would uh, teach that and preach that uh, to all peoples as we're taught to. But there is a point that we need to be able to live that in our life that is so evident that people can see God in us. They said that he was a man that was blameless and upright. This was a man that in all his dealings, he was one that didn't lie, cheat, and steal. Now you could equate that to someone that was a good person someone that had good business sense. I mean, you could do all that with, this, with that statement. But when you combine it all together, it says he feared God and shunned evil. This is a man that took the, the fear of God and the relationship with God very seriously. He was one that would talk to God regularly. We know that, this, uh, that as we read here in just these few short verses that we can see that he offered sacrifices and offerings up to God on a regular basis. But to sit there and be able to say you're blameless and upright, it doesn't say perfect now. It doesn't say perfect. Because as you read through the book of Job, you're going to see there are, some, there are some areas and there's, a, there's a, a time towards the end of the chapter where God stepped in and said, okay, that's enough conversation. Let me set you straight. He set his friends straight and he set Job straight. And uh, he blessed him for all that he went through, of course, uh, as we know. But we see where he wasn't perfect. But there is things that Job did that was right. And it was right in the eyes of God. And to say that you fear God is something that is something that I think is, is, is a challenge for us to do on a daily basis. We need to fear God, not in the sense that we've been caught, not in the sense that uh, you know, we, we say that, that God can see and know everything. We tell kids this and we say, there's nothing, you can't hide from God. And you know, we may do a little uh, game with them where they can go hide and you know, play hide and seek or whatever, but you know, they're always found. Uh, Bob is the only one, though. Guys, it, this is just a side note. You ever play hide-and-seek? You get Bob to hide. Y'all think I'm kidding. Bob, we haven't been found yet, right? I, I don't remember. This has been years. So Bob's pretty good. God knows where he's at. But we've done this. We, we've done those games with them. We treat them and teach them. Like when, they, when they're found, they come back, and we do the whole story with them. But, you know, they're not, Job wasn't perfect. 
Job wasn't one of these guys that, that we sit here and say, well, he was, you know, look, at, look at the greatness of him. He had greatness in his life, but it was because God was there. And he feared the Lord. He had a respect for God. But he also knew that he had to uh, give an account for what was in his life. Job filtered his life through God. To be able to say you shunned evil, you cannot fight evil on your own. I don't know anybody that can do that. That takes the power of God. It takes the name of God. We read in our word and we know that in the name of Jesus, Satan has to flee us because there's power in the name. There is power in that because there's a real God and we, we serve him. And the power of the Lord is all around us. We need to recognize that in our life and be able to know that it is about him. Job wasn't a man that was about himself. He wasn't about somebody that just named himself out there. He said he feared God. He shunned evil. This is the things that he saw and that or could be and was around him and probably saw it in others that needed to not be a part of his life. To be able to shun that away, to push that to the side, was something that he needed God in his life to be able to do. To be able to stand in your community and be someone that is notably uh, godly and be able to give not just good advice but godly advice is something to be proud of. That is something I think he lived for. He was blessed. He was blessed uh, beyond most people in that area. And he, would, he had a large family. And here it says he has seven sons and three daughters. He had many, many uh, animals and things that would again attest to his wealth and his greatness in the area but God was first woke up in the morning God was first looked upon his wife and his sons and his daughters and it was God first thanking them God for them I imagine as he looked at his possessions that he had, he would thank God for that as well. In order for him to keep this blameless and upright business sense about him and, and giving advice and teaching and, and growing the people around him, he had to be one that had a good reputation. And again, not just a good reputation, but a godly reputation. One that would just be able to share with you the word and be able to share with you God. And maybe at this time in, in history, they would, he would maybe even help them how to, this is how you would praise the Lord. This is how you would offer burnt offerings to the Lord. This is how you would do a, a sacrifice to the Lord. This is how you would uh, atone for your sins. And at this time, sacrifice was the way they would do that, to build an altar and to offer that up to the Lord. And again, it had to do not just with the actions, but it was a, a certain uh, altar and a certain incense and a certain animal, the pure animal, that the blood had to be spilt, that would offer up to God. But it wasn't the act of that, it was the heart. Surrendering to the Lord it is the same thing we do today, but we have the perfect sacrifice of Jesus to look to. We, we surrender our heart to him, and it's not just the act of speaking, we share that with the kids, too. It's, just, it's not the act of just saying the words. you got to believe in your heart. And God will bring about that change in your life through his son Jesus and what he did on the cross, the forgiveness of our sins. See, Job would share that. Job would do that. And again, he put those uh, desires of God and those things in his life, and they were first. And, and then we see how, how he was placing others' needs uh, just like they were his own. And I, and I say that because uh, sometimes we say we place others' needs above our own. And there is a time for that. But in this time, we're seeing a man that is leading his family, that is leading people. And he is, first of all, making sure that his life is in order. Guys, we can't sit there and go and point at everybody else and make sure their life's in order when our life is a shambles. Part of his blameless. Part of his uprightness, part of his fear of God is because he feared God and he kept his life in order with God in order to be able to 
have be a husband, to be a father, to be a businessman, to be someone uh, of nobility in the area where he lived, and to be someone that people could go to. What are we doing today in our own lives? Are, are, we, are we doing that where we're trying to catch the attention of God in that way as far as our obedience to him, understanding the, the, uh, uh, the fear that is in our hearts of God? You know, again, not being scared to death of him, but having that honor and respect and knowing that there is a price to pay for our sins. Being able to teach that to people, being able to share that, looking at the needs that they have in their life and be able to try to, to meet that. He would go and uh, he taught his sons to take care of his sisters. They would go and they would have a feast. They would have a time of, of feasting. It says it, would, it lasted for days. And that, when that was over, I'm sure there was a lot of conversation. The brothers and sisters, I'm sure they all got along, no arguments at all in the house. They probably all were just a great meal. And you all got siblings? It's always good to see your siblings, but sometimes it, it brings out some of the good conversation there. But they are sitting there, and after all that was over, the Bible says when the, the days of feasting have run their course, Job would send and, and sanctify them. How did he do that? He would rise up early in the morning. He'd offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all, and that's a, to, of his children. And he did that because it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. You know where his wife got cursed God and, got, and died, Job? Just cursed God and die. Could it be that she heard her husband praying for her and their children in a way to protect them and ask God to help them and grow them and not live a life that would be a curse to God? That they would turn their back to him and not ever want to accept or, or what he's done for them or what would he, he would do for them? I sit there and you, you, you hear things and you read them in the Bible and it's just, I'm like sit there put myself in that situation and I'm like, this man really did this often. And as you look at his family, they were using words, and his wife especially was using words that he used. God, be with my kids. Be with my sons, be with my daughters. And if they have sinned, they have cursed God in their hearts. Forgive them. He loved them. And he lived that example. They probably heard these prayers. You ever had somebody pray for you and you heard it? And it meant something to you. And it, it spur, may have spurred you on to pray likewise. Maybe it helped deal with a situation. We don't need to be so quick to, to talk about someone or, or go out of your way to say something. We need to be that example and pray. And if they hear it, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine. But we're praying this to God. And this is where Job was play, praying that, that, that they would have God in their heart. And if he, they did something in a way that would interrupt that relationship, Forgive them, Lord. How many times will we say that in our house? How many times will we prayed that with our family? That God just, we, I pray forgiveness over them. I pray that they would see you. I pray that they would do this. And it is something that we need to get back to doing in our homes. Praying for the families. Guys, we need to live in an upright, God-fearing, evil-shunning, blameless life. And it takes that relationship with God, and it will lead into our families. Last week, Pastor Lanier quoted a verse that, that said, if we train up our children the way they should go, it won't depart from them. Guys, it's, it won't. I mean, the word, uh, we just see one phrase here that could real easily correlate with what Job's wife said to him trying to save his life, what she thought would be a way to save his life from the, the suffering. But people hear what we're talking about. They hear it. 
It goes into their heart. Now, whether they live it out, that's another story. But that's not up to you. That's you to do the job to plant the seed. And they will make that choice whether to obey it. But never giving them a chance at all and we just living the way we want and having no character, no, no, uh, no direction in life, that's not a way to lead our home. It's not a way to lead our country. I watched uh, an interaction the other day. I'll just put it that way. I've seen kids argue better than what that was. Oh, you're better. You're worse. No, you're worse. You're worse. I wish we could get to a point where we could actually talk about matters and things that, that actually concern the people and concern ourselves and get back to where God would have us to be concerned with what he's given us and treat it with respect and love. We look so much at everybody else. We're so offended, so easily offended on everything now. You say one thing and it offends somebody. You say one other thing. You just try to have a discussion about a topic and it's offensive. As we need to be able to talk in love, we need to be able to talk with direction and purpose and let God be the guide in that. And, and God's word is not something that just brings a soothing uh, ointment to you it, it is something that as he says it cuts and it divides and it gets down to the marrow of the bone where it matters and it's going to sting a little bit it's going to move it's going to change we need to not to be afraid of how God can change and motivate us and move us we see where Job was putting desires in his life and placing others' needs as his own. And this is the one thing that's tough. We can probably do those things once in a while or until something happens. But this phrase right here has always got me in the last part of verse 5. Thus did Job regularly. Job did this regularly in his life. His love and his devotion for God, for his self, his family, to have that relationship with God, that's what caught God's attention. Not that he was bad, not that he had all these faults. It's the love of God that caught his attention. Look at the other greats in the, in the scriptures that we can see where their love for God was so strong that God just loved them in an extra special way. But we got to be careful that when we love God that much and these, we see these that love God so much that, that they are not the ones that are be praised. You know, Moses, one of the, the, one of the most well-known characters in the, in the scriptures, you know, at the end of his life, he was so loved and so respected of the people that he couldn't even have a natural burial. His death wasn't even normal. He, God had to remove him. God took him into a mountain. God buried him himself because the people would have dug him up and worshipped him. We have to be careful not to worship the man, but we worship the God. And we look at that story, and I, I love telling that to kids, and they're like, oh, really? They, gonna, they would have done that? And I'm like... Well, that's what the Bible says. The important thing, God, God did that. God helped that. God wanted the people to see him and not the person. And that's hard sometimes to do. We live in a world where we're people driven. And we want to be able to be driven by seeing others and seeing this and that and, and having all that in front of us. But to be able to do what Joe did on a regular basis takes a true relationship with God. It takes time. It takes prayer. It takes this rising up early in the morning so you can have that uninterrupted time. Maybe early is not a good time for you. Maybe afternoon, maybe evening. But it's taking that time to have that special time with God. And you're honest with God. You are open with God. You are able to, to speak the needs of the people around you, you of, well, of your own and of the people around you. Not afraid to talk to the Lord. 
Sometimes we are scared to ask God for help. We're, we're nervous about what may come of, uh, of the situation. You look at Job in his situation where he was at. In his life, it looked like he was living the best life financially, spiritually, in the family. Looked like everything was good. His friends got caught up in it and they said, well, you must have done something wrong. And when you're about 30 some chapters in the Bible, sitting there trying to figure out, <laughs> casting blame on certain situations and things, the, the point fingers that this is what you did that caused this in your life. Then it takes just a little section of scripture to say, guys, you took your eyes off of God. Took your eyes off the Lord. That's what happened. You guys were, you, you missed the, you missed all the, that what happened here, the, the blessing. Yeah, it was terrible. Catastrophe, all this stuff. But just look at what God could have done in that situation. You just would have held on to him. Don't push God to the side just because it gets rough. Don't push him to the side because you get questioned. Some people will sit there and say, they'll hear that Jesus Christ died for their sins. Maybe there's someone in here that needs to hear that, that Jesus Christ died for your sins. And you need to ask him. You've been, maybe that's something that's on your heart. But we don't want to own up to that. Maybe we don't want to admit that. Maybe we feel like we got, we're going to have to deal with it. That's, that's, it's rough, yes. But God will help you in a way you've never known before. He'll bring a peace that passes understanding. That means you don't understand it, but peace is coming. You may not know how it's happening, but he'll bring it. The salvation, the, the getting that weight off, being able to, to breathe again, to be able to lay your head at night and be able to sleep because you got that sin off of you. We have a God that cares for us and God that will love us and God that will bless us, but we first got to surrender to him. And don't miss don't let Satan trick you and make you miss all the blessings you can get from God. As we come to a time of close, I just want to challenge you on this. If you don't know him as your Savior, I'm going to invite you that you can ask him today. Our VBS, we had three that we know of for sure that asked God to come into their life, forgive them of their sins. We got to share the story of creation. How many times have you heard story of creation we can all quote the first verse in the bible right in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth we knew all he did it was good you know we can share that story with people and and they can learn and know god we can talk about job somebody that in the bible we all well know did you know we can all be encouraged to live that better life by his example of following god so if you don't know him today you can pray and ask forgiveness, and he'll come into your life. If you know him already, and you've just been challenged by a familiar story, a true account of a real man that went through this real problem, but he did it with a real God, and God saw him through to the end, he didn't quit on him. Maybe you just need to pray about a situation in your life or in somebody else's life, or maybe in the life of the church or the life of our community, our country. We can lift that up to the Lord. Start there. Filter that out through him. And he'll share with us how we can respond and how we can act. I just pray as God spoken to, speaks to you and spoken to you, you'll respond to him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for our time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. Lord, I, I thank you that you have given us your word and that shares the, the life of men and women throughout the Bible, throughout the ages, Lord, who learn to trust you and learn the value of that. Lord, most of all, as we learn that you sent your son to this world to die on the cross, to pay the price for our sins. Lord, we say we all have sin, we all fall short. And Lord, you will pick us back up. You will heal us. You will forgive us. And you will set us on that new path. And we just pray for that, Lord. We pray if there's someone here that needs that, that they would respond to you on that. 
Lord, for one that's struggling and hurting, maybe just questioning things. Lord, maybe just not, maybe not praying, not doing enough for you, and they know they're not. I pray that they would get things right with you, Lord. Lord, we know you will forgive. You can turn any soured heart, any hardened heart, Lord, any heart that is just hasn't been with you. Maybe it's just a, an awkward thing, Lord, for some. We understand, and Lord, you understand us even more. So I pray you just help us to, to not be ashamed or afraid to call on you. Lord, help us as we have this time of, to respond and uh, just work in our hearts today, Lord. We ask this in your name.